from CBC Saskatchewan. Tonight on NewsHour. On the stand, a member of Parliament testifies at his trial in Melfort. To tell the truth. Airline apology. Air Canada and Canadian promise better service. Does not happen overnight. And I think we've made enormous progress. And Forecast for the city And of on the air, bringing weather warnings to the people. Good evening. Good evening. Jack Ramsey spent more than an hour on the stand today testifying in his own defense. The member of tar Parliament is charged with the unlawful confinement of a young girl. It allegedly happened in his RCMP office three decades ago. Piachatapadai is covering the trial in Melfort. Well, I want to sit back and, and assess the day. And, and, and assess his own performance on the witness stand. Uh, it's the first you know, time Jack Ramsey spoke out about the allegations. Why was it important to you to testify? Why was it important to do that? To tell the truth. The truth about his time as an RCMP corporal in Pelican Narrows. Specifically, what went on inside the reserve's detachment one winter's evening in 1970. Thirty years later, Ramsey says nothing went on. He says he never held a young girl captive, he never ordered her to undress, and he never threatened to shoot her in the back if she told anyone. In court, Ramsey's lawyer asked him, would he ever say something like that? I have never used language like that in my life, said Ramsey. I have never threatened anyone in my life. If you had asked his lawyer, would you remember? I certainly would, replied Ramsey. The complainant, whose identity is protected by a court order, says she's certain too. She testified Ramsey had a gun out on his desk to bolster his threats. Ramsey said he would never have left his gun unattended. On the witness stand, he testified, if there was a one-way ticket out of the force, that was mishandling your firearm. Ramsey's lawyer says 30 years have clouded the complainant's memory. He says she's mistaken about details. Consistencies in the evidence of the complainant. Uh, dealing with the time when she says that this occurred. Uh, for example, her teacher, her school attendance records. I'm glad you had Bodner says it's that. enough to raise reasonable doubt, all that's needed to acquit his client. Jack Ramsey will have to wait just one more day to find out if he's guilty of unlawful confinement. The judge will hand down her decision tomorrow morning. Pia Chattopadhyay, CBC News, Melfort. Air Canada is apologizing to people in Saskatchewan. Airline executives are in Regina to talk about the merger with Canadian Airlines. As Jennifer Kirby reports, officials say they're working as fast as they can to fix the problems. Rod McDonald owns the Lakeview Gardens Nursery in Regina. He travels to Vancouver twice a year on business. He never had any complaints about the service until Air Canada took over Canadian Airlines. I bought those tickets six, week in, six weeks in advance. And uh, they're telling me that if I had gotten there five or ten minutes later, that I would have been bumped. And yet, my ticket said non-refundable. You know? So, I mean, that, that's, they made me wait and drink really bad coffee. The number of complaints from air travelers is up since the merger happened last December. So far this year, the Canadian Transportation Agency has received more written complaints than it did in the entire year of 1999. I think there's been some problems with getting bookings. Uh, I'm meeting uh, family coming in and they had to do some shuffling. But it's a little confusing not knowing if you ever, which counter to go to, because if your flight is Air Canada, you go to a Canadian counter to check in. Airline officials tried to address some of those complaints in Regina today. I think that there is a significant improvement in the schedule. There are lots of new frequencies, uh, upgrading to jets. This is a good news story. It doesn't, it's not, it's not 100% good news. There are people who have concerns, and we'll keep trying to deal with those concerns. Markey apologized to passengers. He says there are many employees working hard to solve the problems. The problem is this is the largest corporate re-engineering in Canadian history. I mean, this is an enormously complicated task, and, and we're only two months into it, and we've done a remarkable job of, of trying to meld these two competing airlines in a very short period of time. It does not happen overnight. And, Markey says, if the merger hadn't happened, there would have been dire consequences. Canadian Airlines would have gone broke, and thousands of people would have lost their jobs. Jennifer Kirby, CBC News, Regina.
A man with a criminal record has been charged with the murder of Leon Allen. The 26-year-old woman was found dead in her home in Viscount last Friday. Tanya Lahovsky has the story. 47-year-old David Servinsky appeared in court today. He's charged with the second-degree murder of 26-year-old Leon Allen, seen here in home video. The two live together in this house in the town of Viscount, about 75 kilometers east of Saskatoon. The RCMP call it a murder, but won't say yet how Allen was killed. Uh, the autopsy was done yesterday. All the results are not in yet. Uh, you know, we have a suspicion how it was, but until we get the results of all the tests, it would be premature to say exactly how she died. RCMP from the nearby town of Kalonzi were called to the house at about 9.30, the night before Allen died. Wilde won't say why officers were called out, but he says it had nothing to do with the safety of Allen. Early Thursday evening, our officers did receive a call from what's called a third par a party or someone who was not at the residence. Our people responded to that call, dealt with it, and uh, then left. The man charged, David Servinsky, has a record. In 1988, Servinsky served time in federal prison following an incident in Meacham. He held his girlfriend at the time and her children hostage in this house. He was also convicted of beating her. At the same time, Servinsky pleaded guilty to beating a different woman the year before and threatening her with a knife. After appearing in court today on charges of murdering his current girlfriend, Savinsky is back behind bars. He's scheduled to return to court next week. Tanya Lahovsky, CBC News, Saskatoon. Fastel is promising no rate increases until the year 2002 at least. The Crown Corporation made the promise to the federal phone regulator. The CRTC will soon take over the regulation of local phone rates. Now, SASTAL will operate under the CRTC's rules. The 18 months will give SASTAL time to sort out the new regulations. Big trouble at the big top. A group of high school students planned an animal rights protest at a circus in Prince Albert. They went to City Council for permission. Council said no. But as Art Martin reports, the protest went ahead anyway. Animals are a part of just about every circus. But these Prince Albert High School students don't think that's right. I just think, like, pe keeping animals in cages is wrong and they belong in the wild. They look, like, so out of it and, like, they don't have a life. That's not their natural habitat and it's not a place for them to live. So today, a group of about 20 high school students held a protest in front of the circus. That got the attention of the Shriners, the charity that brought the circus to town. You are hurting us and by what you're doing. You're we're hurting, hurting animals, sir. sir. But we're, we're not here to protest the Shriners. We agree with what you're but doing with the money, but we're protesting the fact that you're using animals in that way. But the people that train the animals say this is their livelihood, and they wouldn't think of harming the animals. If you come and you watch this show, there is no way you can think anything other than these animals love me, um, and I love them. City Council never really had the power to tell the students they couldn't protest. In fact, one counselor came out to support the kids. These kids are basically learning a valuable lesson in life, that if you believe in something strongly enough, stand up for it. In the end, the circus still went ahead, but the protesters say they were just glad to have the chance to spread their message. Art Martin, CBC News, Prince Albert. There's been a serious traffic accident near Regina's downtown. Two people were taken to the hospital. One of them, a woman, was not breathing when paramedics removed her from her car. She's now listed as serious condition in hospital. The crash happened at around 3 this afternoon. Two cars and a truck were involved. One car was rear-ended by another and was pushed into the path of an oncoming truck. The truck smashed into the side of the car. Another Saskatchewan town could soon be losing its hospital. The Living Sky Health Board recommends closing the hospital in Lanigan. Today, the opposition accused the government of trying to muzzle the board.
They should be concerned. This is the future of health care in, in their community, and they should be concerned. And if that discussion is actively going on, the community has the right to be a part of that discussion and not excluded from it, and not only engaged in it after the decision is a fait accompli. I would suggest that uh, we have not made any uh, decisions with regard to the Living Sky uh, Health District. We do know that this is a district uh, that is in very bad shape. Uh, and they need to look at how they're going to deliver health services in their, in their district. The minister says her department may reject preliminary recommendations from health districts, so it makes sense to keep them under wraps. Meanwhile, the debate over private health care came to Saskatchewan today. The president of a major union in Canada says the provincial government must fight Alberta's Bill 11. That bill would allow private hospitals to operate. We've been sounding the alarm. And clearly, what we need from the government of Saskatchewan is leadership in order to mobilize the people of Saskatchewan and, 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 and to help to build, frankly, a national crusade in this country to save our Medicare system. Darcy also says Ottawa must increase its share of health care funding. Health ministers will meet in about a month to talk about it. It sparked heated debate for days in the legislature, and now a controversial film has been withdrawn from a Regina Film Festival. The artist responsible for the film won't let the Film Classification Board review it, so it won't be shown at the Queer City Film and Video Festival this week. The provincial government has been under fire for giving money to the festival. A Saskatoon teacher who was fired for sending inappropriate email to his students wants his job back. Bob Farthing used a school computer to send the emails to students in grades 6, 7, and 8. The emails are believed to be of a sexual nature, but not something that would have allowed police to lay charges. Farthing was a teacher with the Saskatoon School Board for 27 years. He's appealing his dismissal. Environment Canada is bringing weather warnings to a community near you. It's a special new program, and it could help you avoid being caught in a storm. Amy Doeman reports. That alarm could save you from the weather, from high winds, hailstorms, or tornadoes, like the one that swept near Saskatoon last year. The alarm tells you when there's a severe weather warning in your area. Frequently, the lead time is only about 10 or 15 minutes or shorter. The severe weather can happen any time in the prairies uh, from May right on through September. So, uh, you know, one must be prepared all the time. Forecast. For the city of Saskatoon, Environment Canada Thunder, is lending Rockford, these radio alarms to community today, groups who are holding clouds, outside events, things like exhibitions, community reunions, tournaments, and concerts. Any place where a lot of people could be in the path of a storm. The warning could give just enough time to take action. Maybe try to uh, evacuate the performers uh, away from the stage and all the electronic equipment and even the audience might be able to uh, get to their automobiles. When you borrow the alarm, Environment Canada will help you make an emergency action plan for your event. It could mean the difference between a good time and disaster. Amy Jo Eamon, CBC News, Saskatoon. A SIAS campus in Regina dedicated the day to Aboriginal awareness. The post-secondary institution sets aside one day a year for this. The school hopes it will enhance awareness of Aboriginal cultures in Saskatchewan. This is the 10th anniversary of the event. Looks like it was interesting. A great idea indeed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, stay with us. We'll be right back. Coming up, Marilyn Mackey has your weather. Lots of sunshine means seating's underway. Closed captioning for this program is brought to you by Cadillac Oak and Pine Furniture with stores in both Regina and Saskatoon. Building tomorrow's heirlooms today. Fastel wants to send you on a summer getaway. Every Friday in May and June, one lucky customer will win a trip to an exotic locale. Right here in Saskatchewan. You could be houseboating at Eagle Point, golfing at Evergreen, or riding off into the sunset with Manitou Outfitters. We don't even have time to mention all the daily prizes. If you're a Sastel long-distance customer, you're automatically entered. It's just our way of saying thanks. Elegance. Beauty. Security. Luna Metalworks. Masters of Ornamental Iron. 
custom fabricating, and metalwork. From an existing design or one of your own, Luna Metalworks has the experience and versatility to creatively bring your ideas and needs to life. Let Luna Metalworks make your dreams a reality. Serving Saskatchewan and the world, Luna Metal products are worth hanging on to. Once somebody arrives at the South Thompson Inn, the feeling here is one of total relaxation. So whatever it takes for us to do to make the guests have a good experience, we'll do. I wanted outdoor furniture that would make people comfortable. The quality offered by Walmart can be delivered at low prices. These colors here blend in perfectly with the outdoors, with the building, and with the backdrop of the mountains. And I accomplished all of those by uh, shopping at Walmart. It's the special feeling that's waiting at the door. The place you keep your hopes. And your dreams. It's the warmth of all. The cool quiet at the end of the day. Now it's easy to bring the comfort of York air conditioning to your home. Save with our bonus spring offers, now through Canada Day. With York, it's always good to be back home. This weather report brought to you by Lotto 649. The next jackpot is an estimated $10 million. Where's your ticket? Well, hello everyone. We had a very nice day in parts of the province today. And here we have a farmer out taking advantage of the nice warm weather and sunshine, doing some seeding just west of Regina earlier today. And of course, it's nice weather for that, but now they could use a little bit of rain, and that is in the forecast. Also, uh, Saskatchewan Agriculture says that seeding is a little bit ahead of the five-year average, so that's good news. Let's take our daily trip around the country and see how the rest of Canada is faring. As you can see, some drizzle in both Halifax and Montreal. Calgary is sitting at uh, 12 degrees with some cloud cover. Vancouver, 10 with showers and the hot spot. Ontario, once again today in Windsor, 29 degrees. Looking at our satellite map then from the last 24 hours, clear through the southern regions, some cloud wet snow into the north, and we're watching this system advance into the south. With it, we are looking from 15 to 25 millimeters of rain possible by Thursday morning. Let's look at the systems map then. Here is what we have. A low pressure system, fairly stationary in Alberta, but watch everything start to move. We're going to see some showers and thunder showers into southern regions tonight. This cold front pushes in. We are looking for cool temperatures for the next couple of days, but uh, it looks like we might see some warming by the end of the week. Okay, let's take a look then at the forecast from Environment Canada and your current conditions. We'll start as always in the southwest. Lots of clouds through there right now. Look at those temperatures. 14 Maple Creek, 13 Moose Jaw. Showers and thunder showers tonight and tomorrow. And then as we go into the long range forecast, more showers for Thursday, but clearing up for Friday and warm 18 for Saturday. Into the southeast, some clouds through there as well. 12 in Weyburn and Estevan, 14 in Regina. Showers again in the forecast for tonight and for tomorrow and fairly cool. Some thunder showers as well. Again, Thursday we'll see showers, but Friday we're looking for some sun and cloud and things warm up a little bit. Into east central regions, 12 right now in Melford and Wynyard. 40% chance of showers tonight, only 3 for your overnight low. 11 with more showers for Wednesday. And then those showers stick around again on Thursday and for Friday and Saturday heading into the weekend. It's looking pretty good. West Central area is cloudy through there. 14 in Lloydminster, the Battlefords and Saskatoon, 13 elsewhere. You are looking for showers tonight and tomorrow, 13 for your daytime high. Showers again on Thursday and then 15 for Friday, 18 degrees for Saturday. Cloud hanging around through the north, only a little bit of clear sky right now in PA, sitting at 13 degrees. Look at the overnight low tonight, cool, minus 2 with some sun and cloud then for tomorrow and getting up to only 7. And then there's your long range forecast, 13 for Thursday and warming up nicely by Saturday. Taking a look at your weather watcher picture tonight, this is from Ben Kisser. He's 8 years old from Landis and he writes, April showers bring May flowers. And they certainly do. Ben, thank you for that lovely, lovely picture. You'll get a package of goodies in the mail. Well, last night I had passes to give away to the Yorkton Film Festival, and judging by the answers I received, you guys really have to hone up on your film festival trivia. 
I ask this skill testing question. What year was the first Yorkton Film Festival held? The answer, 1950. Our winner, who did <laughs> come close anyway, was Judy Sawchuk. She's from Yorkton. Congratulations to you, Judy. I hope you have a great weekend there. And uh, the passes go on sale Thursday. You can pick them up in Yorkton at the Holiday Inn. Could have sworn it was 1952. No, it was 50. Oh, 1950. Okay, good to know. Okay, thanks <laughs> Good effort. Good effort. <laughs> we tried anyway. Yep. Thanks, Marilyn. <laughs> okay. And we're back right after this. Let's have another look. Just a clean hit by Bugner, and he goes down and hits his head on the ice as well. Primo's looking behind him, looking for the puck. He just sees Bugner, but it's too late. Glenn Reed has sports when News Hour returns. Once upon a time, in a kingdom not so far away, there lived a wise old king and a handsome young prince. In this kingdom, there also lived a terrible creature. The creature had a long row of sharp teeth and eyes that glowed red in the darkness. And when the creature walked, it shook the ground beneath its feet. It lived in a deep, dark cave on the edge of the kingdom. When it was very angry, it could breathe a fire hot enough to melt even the king's strongest sword. It had long, gangly arms that could zap you. But the creature's long arms could not reach as far as the castle. So the king and the prince were safe. One ring. In a perfect world, water is left untouched. In the real world, you'll want the new Brita on tap faucet filter. It removes all these impurities, bringing clear, fresh, wonderful tasting water to your world. Brita, water the way nature intended. Wednesday on CBC Radio. Hi, I'm Sheila Coles. So Your Child is Gay, that's the title of a new book about counseling and accepting a gay son or daughter. I'll talk with the book's author tomorrow on the CBC Morning Edition. Wednesday. Airline merger, flying the not-so-friendly skies. It's just, it's just awful. Just absolutely awful. CBC NewsHour, Wednesday at 6. Well, we'll spare you the cliches tonight, Thank Glenn. You. It was just a, a, a big game for Pittsburgh, right? Well, a healthy Jagger would have made it interesting, but it would, really would have been neat if Mario came out of the owner's box and laced him up. <laughs> then game. they would have won. <laughs> yeah, they would have won. Only the Flyers and Penguins are holding up the show with the Stars and Avalanche and Devils waiting in the wings to start the conference finals. Philadelphia and Pittsburgh were playing game six tonight, and a sight for sore, are, uh, sore eyes, definitely. As far as Penguin fans are concerned, the visual confirmation that Jagger was suited up and ready to play Jagger at 50% is better than no Jagger at all. And the Flyers would have to play this game without Keith Primo, who was splattered by Bob Bugner in the first minute. They say that this was payback for game five when Bugner got hit, but Primo got uh, a ride from the game, not the kind he was hoping for. He left on a stretcher. Early word was that uh, Primo was suffering only with the sore neck. So if that's true, that's uh, pretty good news. Flyers will open it up on the power play in the first as uh, Mark Recchi will spot it and flip it by Ron Tugnut. And it was 1-0 uh, for the Flyers. That held until the 44-second mark of the second period as Recchi will slide it in front for John LeClaire, who puts it in, make it 2-0. Philadelphia, but the Penguins would make it interesting. Under 10 minutes to play in the third, it'll be Corbet. He bangs it in to make it a 2-1 hockey game, and uh, it's heating up in Pittsburgh, but the Flyers would run them out of time as they hold on for a 2-1 victory. They take this series in six, and they will face the Devils in the uh, conference final starting Sunday. The Avalanche meet the Stars in the Western final, which starts on Saturday. Former Blades coach Lorne Mulliken is now looking for work. He was fired by the Blackhawks today based on Mike Smith's gut feeling. The Chicago director of hockey operations said he didn't have the confidence that Mulliken could lead them to the playoffs. And what a difference a few months makes. That's how Trent McCleary is thinking these days. 
Former Swift Current Bronco almost lost his life in a hockey game, and now he's hoping to resume his NHL career. We have more from Doug Dirks in Calgary. Three months ago, Trent McCleary was nearly killed by a slap shot during a game in Montreal. The puck shattered his larynx, cutting off McCleary's airway. It's, it's mind-boggling. Like, three months ago, I'm lying in intensive care, and it's... It was just, uh, it's amazing what three months will do. Like, I put all, pretty much all the weight back on. It's not really in the right spots right now, but uh, it's coming back, and it's, it's been a wild ride. McCleary's wild ride continues Tuesday night in Calgary. He's the guest of honor at a fundraiser for the Canadian Intensive Care Foundation. I was on the ice one minute, and about 20 minutes later, I was in surgery, and, like, it was, it was a phenomenal job, and, like, there's so many people that I, I want to thank, and like, we want to just let everybody know about the intensive care like uh, I guess the one piece of the puzzle that a lot of times gets left out so uh, we're trying to raise awareness and uh, some some money can come in and we can uh, get some more research and and uh, I think everybody will benefit because it's uh, it's a huge aspect in the hospital and uh, in a lot of people's lives hockey has been a part of McCleary's life since he was a little boy but he won't know until training camp if he's well enough to continue playing it at the NHL level I feel good. It's just uh, whether I can get enough air in me to uh, to play the game. Like uh, it's a high intensity game, and you got to recover between shifts. And and uh, if I can't breathe, I I won't be able to play. So I I got to get that and make sure I'm in good shape. And we'll try it this summer, and hopefully everything will be good. And what a difference a few months has made for Trent McCleary. What a difference a week has made for Team Canada. The Canadians have finally found their skating legs at the World Hockey Championship. And now a quarterfinal spot is in the bag after beating Slovakia today. Let's go to St. Petersburg, Russia. And Slovakia will hit the board with the only first period goal. It'll be a Hertes. He beats uh, Jose Theodore in the uh, Canadians' net, and it was 1-0. Canada outscores the Slovaks 2-1 in the second period, including this one from Steve Sullivan. And the Blackhawks uh, from Ryan Smith, 2-2 after 40 minutes. And less than a minute after Sullivan's second of the game to tie it at three, Jeff Finley would score what would be the game winner for Canada as they claim a spot in the quarterfinals. Three straight wins for Canada. They will face the Swiss in the quarters. And the North Battleford North Stars back on the ice today at the Royal Bank Cup in Fort McMurray, Alberta. The SJHL champs put their 1-1 one one record on the line, and they are now 2-1 and one after a 4-3 overtime victory. Cody Laughlin scored the winner, his third of the game, in overtime, and uh, that clinches a playoff berth for the Stars, who will face Chilliwack tomorrow. They've uh, been defying the odds for the last month. May as well go all the way. That would be terrific. Yeah. That would be great. Okay, thanks, Bob. Okay, all right. and coming up tomorrow on uh, CBC Radio's The Morning Edition, Sheila Coles will look at the future role of Canada's wheat board. That's on CBC Radio between uh, six, six and nine. And, nine. <laughs> <laughs> and bring your umbrellas tomorrow. We're looking for showers tonight and for the next few days. So raincoats for the kids when they go to school. Okay. okay. Fair enough. Thanks for watching. Uh, by the way, tomorrow we're on at uh, six o'clock. No hockey until Saturday. Excellent. Can we make it until then? I think sure. so. See you tomorrow. Good night. You are watching CBC Television.